This week, Lab TV travels to an Army research lab in Natick, Massachusetts, to meet engineers who design shelters for soldiers. Well, the shelter is designed to protect what's inside. So that can be a soldier, that can be a F-14, that can be a helicopter, it can be uh, computer equipment, whatever the soldier would need for his mission. Your home is a shelter, and so is the tent that you use when you're camping. People need shelters to shield them from rain, snow, and wind. But army shelters can protect soldiers from a lot more. The basics for shelters are keep, keep them warm, keep them cool if they're in the hot environment, keep them protected from the sand, the wind, and those types of things. So we, we always start there. We also protect the soldier from other agents like chemical and biological agents that might be in the area. Uh, also, if there is a, a blast or a mortar round that goes off nearby, we would be able to protect the soldier from some of the, some of the fragments associated with that. To help protect soldiers from those blasts, the engineers develop panels that can fit inside of tents. What I work on is um, ballistic protection for tents. And this is just a model, but it, it shows you, we're taking panels, we're putting it inside the tent. So we're trying to give the soldier who's living, sleeping, working in a tent, some type of protection while he's on the move. The panels are made of a type of fiberglass called ballistic e-glass. What you're looking at here on the screen is basically a component used in our modeling. We take our panels, put them in a, a camp, and impose that model on the camp and get results so we know um, in the lab how well our shelters are doing. I think they're going to sleep easier and just feel better about their working day knowing that they have some level of protection. The engineers also develop new ways to make the shelters energy efficient by using LED lighting and solar panels for cooling and electricity. We develop the technologies for insulation, for lighting. We also do flexible photovoltaics, so we generate electricity from the power of the sun. But even with those lights on, the tents are invisible at night. If all the lights that come with this tent are on at night and somebody's in a helicopter looking down in our tent camp, it should be invisible. You know, if you go camping and you walk through a campground, all the tents are glowing. Our tents don't glow. And in fact, if you have night vision goggles on, you don't see them. Army shelters come in lots of different shapes, sizes, and materials. The newest shelters are supported by inflatable tubes called air beams. I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, and I just fell in love with air beams and air beam shelters. This is an example of an air beam, and an air beam is an inflatable composite. And by inflatable composite, what we mean is that this is a high strength textile on the outside, and essentially we inflate that textile with air. Now the air is pressurized, so if you think of an inner tube, and when you blow it up, the inner tube becomes stiffer. Well, we pressurize these to up to 80 PSI, so they are strong enough to even support a car. With an air beam tent, what you basically do is you roll out the air beam, the tent skin is attached to the air beam, then you just take a compressor and you inflate the air beam, and as you inflate the air beam, the tent goes up by itself. Everybody wants a nice, warm tent Nobody wants to set them up. It's just, you know, they've got a mission to do when they get there. They don't want to spend two days setting up tents. So um, that's been really well received. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to be able to develop a technology and have it used in the field by our soldiers and know that we are helping our soldiers. We want them to feel as close to home as we can. And that's really our goal. To find out more about shelter, design, materials, and engineering, check out labtvonline.org.